Welcome to the Ohio Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. My name is Jasmine. I'm gonna serve as your facilitator for this session. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. The first, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our amazing presenters at any point throughout our session. Second, your camera and microphone are off, so we are not able to see or hear you. Third, this is just one of many different sessions happening, so feel free to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week or so. With that said, I want to turn it over to our first presenter, University of Maryland. Okay, good day, everyone. I'm Todd St. Vrain from the University of uh, Melbourne. So we're going to start off uh, down under here. Uh, so uh, let's get started here. There we go. All right, so welcome to the University of Melbourne um, and, or Wamanjika, as we say in the local uh, Aboriginal language. So Melbourne is a large public research intensive university located in the Southern part of Australia. Uh, this is the beautiful Great Barrier Reef, which is about a four hour flight to the north of Melbourne. And imagine taking classes with Madeline Van Oppel, who is bioengineering heat resistant coral in an effort to save the Great Barrier Reef. And this is just one example of the academic experience that you can have at a university that is regarded as an Australian version of an Ivy League. And this is our main campus, which is right in the heart of Melbourne, about 15 minutes from downtown in between the biomedical precinct and our version of Little Italy. So one of the things I love about Australia is that it's a very multicultural country and our, we are a very large university with 25,000 undergraduate students and an equal number of graduate students. An American community of about several hundred students uh, for you, but also being able to make friends from around uh, the world. We have great outcomes uh, for our graduates, including all international students have the ability to work in Australia for two years after graduation, giving you options as to where to start your career. Our degrees in Australia are just three years, um, and which is savings in itself. At the current exchange rate, your annual tuition is going to be about $33,000, probably an additional $20,000 US for living expenses. You can use a US student uh, educational loans at the University of Melbourne. One thing that's different is that admissions is based only on academic achievements, so not looking at personal statements, extracurriculars. We'll get into the details of that in just a moment. And you're doing all of this in a city of 4 million, which is truly one of the most livable cities in the world, uh, which is known as Australia's sports and cultural capital. So we have um, over 150 options of degrees, uh, of majors streamlined into about eight different degrees. Uh, this could include the Bachelor of Agriculture, uh, Arts is what we call liberal arts, uh, an entire degree in biomedicine, uh, we call business commerce, uh, design, uh, a couple of degrees in fine arts and music, as well as a plethora of things in science and uh, including engineering and IT. So we call degrees courses in Australia. So if you go to our find a course page, this will be a chance for you to um, find, explore all of the majors and which degrees those might be in. And our curriculum within those three years, 25% of your degree is what we call breadth subject. So it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of exploring interest and also when you know, giving you time to declare a major. You have an option to stay, extend your degree to fourth year, either through what we call something called concurrent diplomas or a year of independent research and honors. So looking at entry requirements, if you are coming from a US high school, it is guaranteed entry based on a minimum SAT or ACT score, a minimum unweighted GPA, and we do have an AP exam to, to meet prerequisites. We are not test optional, but as we say, we are test alternative in that there is an, an online Australian stat test 
and also an aggregate of your AP exams to meet the requirement for the SAT or the ACT. Also, if you're not presenting an AP exam to meet a prerequisite, really the only option is if you're doing like a university or college level uh, course and you'd have to submit the syllabus uh, for review for that. Any IB students, we do have entry based on minimum IB scores and certain prerequisites. If there's any transfer students here today, it's really straightforward. It's just a 3.0 GPA and only a few degrees having specific uh, requirements. Now it is different down under, our seasons are opposite and so is the academic year. So semester one starts in March, semester two starts in late July. You could start in either semester because all of the core classes are offered in each semester. If there's anyone looking to start in the second half of this year, that would be online because the borders do remain closed in the pandemic, but we are hopeful that the borders would be opening in time of 2022. Our application deadlines are a bit different, so my advice is just to apply when you're applying to universities in the U.S. since we do offer rolling admissions and also if you'd like to uh, have a deferral so that you could have a bit of a mini gap year, um, that is something quite automatic in Australia. So just to wrap up, uh, we call uh, dorms colleges, um, uh, guaranteed accommodation. Of course, there's lots of clubs and societies. And we'll take a brief campus tour of the campus, including beautiful sandstone buildings, modern facilities, um, have to stop off at the underground car park because it includes things like where Mad Max movies are made. And this is Great Melbourne and a uh, city of sports and culture. And uh, finally, um, if you'd like to get in touch, uh, just get in touch. Um, I'm based in San Francisco and I uh, would love a chance to speak with you more. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Our next university is the University of East Anguilla. East Anglia, the regional manager that works with students both in the US and Canada, um, and I am based in Michigan. Apologies if my internet isn't functioning too well, it just gave me a notification. But you was founded in 1963. We are a public campus-based research institution, um, as a lot of the institutions in the UK are public. Um, we have a wide variety of subjects under four faculties and 23 schools, which basically amounts to over 100 in major we're a large size university, but on the smaller side of that designation with about 17,000 students of which 17% are international. Um, because you may have not heard of UEA before, I'd just like to establish us with the ranking of being in the world top 200 institutions and also within the UK top 25. So if you do come to us, you will be getting a very strong education. We are located in Norwich, England, which is about an hour and a half Northeast of London by train. You can see it marked pink glint on the map. Um, that area of England is beautiful countryside. So you're kind of surrounded by serene, uh, serene farmland. You're also 30 minutes from the coast. North itself is the biggest or one of the bigger cities for that area. Um, it has a population of about 130,000. Uh, but we do have enough to keep you entertained. One of the most affordable cities and one of the best cities to live in um, in that area as well. Um, we do also have one of the highest number of vegan restaurants per person, even if you're not as like to say that this shows off the eclectic nature that is Norwich. If you are lucky enough to watch Jingle Jangle on Netflix over the holiday season, the snowball in Norwich, or a very quintessentially British place to live. Um, and also very friendly um, people are in Norwich um, and we're easily accessible. We have our own international airport as well as by um, train or bus from any one of the London major airports. Our campus is located about three miles from the city center. We're located on over 320 acres of green space that sparks in Great Britain on the right hand side. Um, we also have student union which is has pubs as well as a music venue and we host or more live music gigs per year. 
our library is open 24 seven. And we also do have accommodation that's guaranteed for first year students. Um, so you can live in a variety of options on campus. Uh, we have our own lake that you see on the left hand side students really take advantage of the green space and take walks around that area, um, as well as the residents to um, walk their dog. We do have some new facilities on campus, including Productivity East for our engineering students, as well as engineers um, that work in the East Anglia region can use that center. And we also have um, the new science building, which was on the first slide. The Sainsbury Center for Visual Arts in the top left hand corner is our on campus museum. It's also in the back um, of my background, um, but that is mentioned only because it is featured in the Avengers films as the Avengers headquarters. This is a list of the degrees and kind of the broader areas. Again, we do have 160 or more degree offerings. Uh, we're by far known for creative writing and environmental science, but we also do well with business, economics, and international development. And we also have a brand new emphasis on engineering. Our programs are three years. You do have to know what you want to study. And you apply for us via UCAS. Our requirements are 3.3 or higher GPA, and we require some examination, either three AP or IB exams, or an SAT or an ACT, as the score is noted there. If you do have a subject specific requirement for your program, you do have to have that in AP class. We also look for demonstrated academic interest so that you've completed work in your field and do know what you're going into. We also do require interviews, auditions, or portfolios for some of our courses. Our costs start at about 24,000 US dollars per year. Um, and again, it is three years. Even if you did a program with a year abroad or a year in industry built in, that program is not going to cost um, the same tuition fees for that included year. And it's going to be about a third or a quarter of the cost. And um, so we tend to say we compare to an out of state institution, but even some in state institutions. And then the cost of living set by the UKBI dollars roughly for the nine months, so for the year. You can live more affordably than this, and certainly in Norwich, which is an affordable city, you can do so. Our scholarships for 2021 are about 4,000 pounds or are 4,000 pounds for the first year. You can apply by essay for 8,000 pounds per year. Um, for three years. We also do tend to have some scholarship by course and then some music and sport options. We are also FAFSA loan eligible. If you um, can get those, then you can bring them over to the UK. The vast majority of the schools are. And then students are allowed to work on their visa. 20 hours per week while you're one of my tips and tricks for students looking into universities. We do have an American student ambassador in our international development program. Um, she's from California. Her name's Nicole, and she'd be happy to connect with you. Also, feel free to reach out to me directly. I'm here to help you with whatever it is that you need. Thank you so much. Thank you. Up next, we have Northumbria University, Newcastle. Hey, sorry about that. I was just trying to unmute myself and it wouldn't let me. Uh, can't stop the fans hearing what do I need to hear, though. Um, welcome to Northumbria University from both me, Ian Harris, International Recruitment Manager, and our Angel of the North, the most viewed statue in the UK, welcoming you to our home, the city of Newcastle upon Tyne, northeast of England. Always with a warm embrace, but not maybe always with the blue skies. Uh, it isn't a presentation to international students without a photo of an airport, and we love our airport. You will too, as you connect from the big US airport to our small one terminal airport, making it very easy to locate our meet and greet service available at the beginning of every new student year. The airport is a 20 minute metro or taxi journey from the city centre, which makes it very easy for students to return and jet off for weekend or holiday breaks to cities across Europe with many low cost airlines flying from here, making us all incredibly envious. We love our location, but we know that every university will reference their proximity to London. From Newcastle, there are 20 plus direct train services a day, taking three hours to arrive in London's King's Cross. 
For those who, like me, have fallen in love with Newcastle, there is a great city waiting to explore. From the Angel, another warm welcome awaits from the local Geordies and their wonderful dialect. It is English, but not as you might know. Don't worry, we can provide a translator. Uh, Newcastle is a medium-sized UK city with a population of around 300,000 people. It is as close to a college city as you can get with two large universities in the city centre. And during term time, one in six of a population is a student. The city has a welcoming and vibrant reputation, a passion for sport, especially our EPL team, Newcastle United, and an appetite for a great night out. For those seeking something a little quieter, you can easily access world heritage sites like Hadrian's Wall, built by the Romans, famous castles, national parks, and miles and miles of beautiful coastline. Newcastle also benefits from a relatively small footprint, making it a walking city, and students will find themselves very familiar with their surroundings in no time at all. That brings a sense of safety, reassurance, and with this a reputation for being one of the safest university cities in the UK. Newcastle is small enough to be familiar, but big enough to live. And from the river, you can walk 20 minutes up through the city to our campus. Northumbria University, in the heart of the city, is a university on an upward trend across international, national and subject rankings. We're a top 30 UK ranked and a top 400 global ranked, the highest ranked young university in the world. We are making an impact globally and locally. Personally, I love the opportunity students have to inform and be informed by industry, whether during their classes by former graduates, including figures like Sir Johnny Ive, designer of the iPhone and Apple Watch, or out on placements such as nurses in hospitals, computing scientists at Microsoft, or sports management students on the Olympic Organizing Committee. All of these were American students. Our internationally recognized accreditations, practice-led teaching, and opportunities for industrial placements contribute to an excellent reputation for graduate employability. We have a comprehensive offer at Northumbria with over 200 three-year majors across four academic faculties, business and law, environment and engineering, health life science, and arts design and social science. We offer single honor majors with some joint honors and major minors within the same course subject area. Northumbria is particularly strong in computing, science, design, sports management and nursing. And these proved to be very popular with American students wanting a fast track into vocational professions. The majority of our majors offer a year long placement or further study abroad. For those who want something really different alongside their UK study experience, we have a unique opportunity for any non-business students to study an international year in business with our partner, Amsterdam University of Applied Science. And although it makes me very, very jealous, if there are any aspiring male or football or female soccer players, Northumbria has partnered with the Eye to Eye Soccer Academy, combining selected majors with a pro-level development programme. Newcastle is a very affordable city to live, partly why I decided to stay after my graduation in 2004. Living costs are very affordable, student discounts available for pretty much everything, and there's great opportunities for part-time work. You can live on campus at Northumbria if you want. University accommodation is guaranteed for all international students. The majority of our accommodation is within a five minute walk of the campus. All rooms are single occupancy and costs vary depending on how important things are, like your own bathroom and shower to you. We don't have campus meal plans per se, but we do have a catered accommodation offer for those who have parents worried about you feeding yourself. Living and studying in England is in many ways similar to the US. We have the clubs and associations you would likely find in US colleges, and some perhaps you wouldn't. Um, we do have a great variety of NCAA Division I and II in soccer, volleyball, and athletics. Sport is a very passionate theme in the city and campus. Our average cost of attendance is $98,500 for a three year major. Students can use their financial aid for Northumbria. And we do have a slightly different application offer, but decisions predominantly be made on the academic grades. For more information, Thank you. Please do reach out either via email or to arrange a one to one meeting with me using this QR code. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is Lancaster University. Okay, hello everyone and thank you very much for taking the time to join us. Uh, my name is Tom and I'm here to give you a taster of what life is like as a student studying on our campus. I'm an ex-student myself, um, so absolutely any questions that you have um, about student life, uh, you're welcome to get in touch with me and I'll provide my contact details at the end of the slideshow. 
Okay, so this is our 560 acre parkland campus. Um, I'm not sure if any of you have visited a campus university before, but it's basically like a student town. Most students will live here at least for their first year. We can guarantee accommodation um, if Lancaster is your firm choice. And it also contains all of your academic and study um, facilities that you'd require, including our library, um, research in spaces for te um, technological facilities um, for both our students and our researchers, as Lancaster is a very research focused university, uh, which has a wide range of benefits for all of the students studying on our campus. Um, and in addition to that, of course, it's got all of the leisure facilities as well. Um, so these range from our sports center, shops, restaurants, cafes, um, and nine college bars. Um, we're located in the northwest of England, um, next to the Morecambe Bay, um, and with views over the Lake District National Park, which is arguably some of the most beautiful uh, mountainous scenery that there is to offer in England. So it's a fantastic location to be if you're into the outdoors. Hey, we are one of the few institutions in the UK that offers a collegiate system. If you're not familiar with what that means, it means that we break down the university into nine separate colleges, eight undergraduate and one postgraduate. You'll have the option to apply for these after you accept the offer and you'll choose them alongside your accommodation. For me as a student online Lancaster, this was an excellent um, service, which really helped me settle in in my first year. If you imagine getting to be part of one small college community, um, rather than just arriving as a university of, of the big as a student of the university as a whole, um, you can see how it really helps you start to make friends, get to know the campus, and settle in. It also makes for a fun sporting environment and um, having eight other competitor teams located on the campus for you to compete with. All of the colleges do have their own separate characteristics, although you'll have a broadly similar experience in all of them. So it's not something to worry about. Um, if I was to give my personal advice on choosing a college on our campus, I would say obviously Grisdale is the best and the most fun, which is exactly why I joined it. Um, I would guide students looking for a busy experience to live in Boland in the centre of campus um, and then if you would prefer a more quiet relaxed environment to study in you can choose Cartmill College um, which is in a converted farm frequently holds live events such as music and comedy um, but there's a wide range to choose from on our campus so you'll be able to find a college and accommodation that suits you. Hey, so there's a wide range of methods um, to assess the university and to measure a university. Um, so personally, we always advise students uh, to have a think about what is most important for you in a university experience. Um, this could be facilities, location, um, and then find a, a university that's able to provide those. Um, one thing that we do, we are very happy to point out is that we're currently ranked in the top 10 of the three major UK league tables, and um, which take into a wide things into consideration in ranking their universities, um, such as diversity on campus, um, student staff ratios, and um, in resources invested in student facilities. You'll also be very happy to see on the second panel uh, that we also perform very highly in the student satisfaction surveys, which I think you could fairly argue is probably the most important measure. Um, and you'll also be very glad to hear that we also have ranked very highly for employ employability and rates of students, which is obviously what you're all coming there um, here for. It's the end goal. Um, the only other award that I'll point out is that we, our accommodation is frequently chopping um, the accommodation charts in the UK. And this year we were awarded best student halls in the UK uh, for the 10th time out of the last, uh, sorry, for the eighth time out of the last 10 years, which is a reflection of the high quality of accommodation that we have for our students. Okay. We are a very global campus, 
um, all students will have the opportunity to gain international experience while they're studying with us, uh, be that through a full year abroad at one of our global partner institutions or through short term travel, perhaps as part of a module for field work or even having the opportunity to self fund travel through our student union and um, if it has academic um, value to you. There's an important part of the international experience also, of course, takes place on our campus. Um, and we're very proud that over 30% of our students are international and over 30% of our staff are also international on the campus. Okay, so being a campus university at the outskirts of a big city, a big part of student life um, outside of the academic study is centered around our clubs and societies. Uh, we have a very active student union with over 200 clubs and societies. Um, as you can imagine from our location, with me mentioning that we're very close to the Lake District, you can see, imagine the outdoors activities are a huge part of student life. There's also a range of academic opportunities to get involved in and anything you can imagine from baking to the parkour society. This is really enhanced by the fact that we're only a 15 minute bus ride away from the historic city of Lancaster, which is based around an 11th century castle, hosts multiple music events throughout the year um, and has a range um, of arts, trendy coffee shops, independent theatres, live music and food events. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed that very brief taster of what it's like to study at Lancaster. Um, and please do get in touch if there's absolutely anything else you'd like to ask. Thank you very much. Thank you. Up next, we have the University of Essex. Thank you. Sorry, let me just begin by sharing my screen. Hopefully you can all see that. So hello everyone, my name is Emma and I am one of the uh, representatives at the University of Essex. So in keeping with this six by six theme, I have put together six of my favourite things about Essex to keep it nice and simple. Okay, so first up is location. At uh, Essex, we have three campuses. They are located in Colchester, South End and Loughton. Colchester is the largest of our three campuses um, and it sits on 200 acres of beautiful award-winning parkland and is where the majority of our students study and most of our courses are taught. Um, if you aren't used to a picture of the United Kingdom, then you certainly will be by the end of this presentation. At the top right there is um, a picture of where our three campuses are located. Um, in my opinion, it is the perfect distance to London. We're less than an hour by train. It's close enough if you want to get into the city and take advantage of all that London has to offer. But we're far enough away so you really notice um, the, the uh, difference in, uh, in price, prices, for example. Colchester is the UK's oldest recorded town, so we have some really beautiful Roman architecture, which you can see in that picture of um, the castle that sits in Castle Park. We're not known in the UK for our glorious sunshine, but we do have some of the UK's best weather in Essex. So if living somewhere um, that is relatively dry and sometimes sunny, uh, if that's important to you, then uh, Essex could be a good fit for you. Um, on a serious note though, Essex uh, is a really great mix of beaches. You can see on that map, we're really close to the coast. We have some really beautiful um, small beaches close to, close to the university. We're close to the city of London and we're surrounded by some lovely towns and cute villages and surrounded by beautiful countryside as well. So after location is academic teaching. Uh, we are rated gold in the teaching excellence framework. So that's so that is the highest accolade and a testament to the quality of the teaching. We're a research-led university and we're uh, recognised for the quality of that um, research. We're top 25. We are a university that is known for our social sciences. So in particular subjects like politics, sociology, criminology, international relations, economics. These are subjects that we are consistently well ranked for. And our business school is ranked in the top 2% worldwide. We have a really interdisciplinary approach to, to our teaching as well. So you might be studying a subject in our department 
um, or in our Faculty of Humanities, but that doesn't mean you can't um, pick and choose different classes or modules in our hum Faculty of Social Sciences, for example. So you really have the opportunity to shape the degree around your interests. We offer a huge uh, range of subjects. We have three faculties, science and health, humanities and social sciences. And if you wanted to explore our courses in a bit more detail, then there is a link at the bottom of the page there. So number three is student life. We have over 160 different sports clubs and societies. So I'm sure that there will be something that you are interested in. One of the great things though, is if there's not, um, and you want to start your own society, then then you have the opportunity and possibility to do that. We offer on-campus accommodation and we guarantee that for our first year of students, so you get to live on campus. Um, if you are living and studying at our Colchester campus, it kind of has like a mini city vibe, but all our facilities, teaching facilities, accommodation, everything is in one place. So it has everything that you could need. We have buses that go through campus as well that will take you to Colchester, which is the nearest town, and then trains onwards uh, to London or where, wherever it is you might want to might want to explore. We are ranked seventh to spend on services and facilities per student in the UK. So we're pumping money back into our campuses and facilities for students to enjoy and take advantage of. A couple of examples are um, our brand new STEM centre and we have a brand new sports arena too with some state of the art basketball um, and volleyball facilities. Okay, so cost effective. You might already be aware of this, degrees are in the UK, um, or certainly in England, are three years in length. So already that's one a whole year worth of fees that you wouldn't have to pay for. Our fees at Essex are really competitive. They do vary from course to course uh, ever so slightly, but approximately about 16 and a half to 19 and a half thousand pounds per academic year. We also offer some really competitive scholarships. Our America's Regional Scholarship is worth £3,000 towards your tuition. We have some really competitive sports scholarships as well, and uh, an IB Excellence Scholarship, which is merit-based and automatic. We, like some of the other universities that are presenting, um, are also FAFSA accredited. Okay, so um, employability. We offer um, lots of lots of our courses offer the opportunity to do a placement year. So if you're particularly career career orientated and you want to get um, industry experience whilst you're still um, completing your degree, then a placement year might be a really good opportunity. The way that would work is you would do your first and second year at university, do your placement year in your third year, and then come back and complete your studies in your fourth year, technically your fourth year. 91% of our students are in employment or further studies. So that's a really high percentage of our students that have completed their undergraduate degree that are then um, either working or, or completing their, um, or have gone on to further study. Employability modules are built into your undergraduate degree. So we are preparing you for, um, for work once you've completed your studies. There's all sorts of CVs, um, skills and CV workshops, networking opportunities as well on campus and career events. Something that I love about Essex is you can learn a language completely for free alongside your degree as well. So last up is global community. This is probably my favorite thing about Essex. It's such an international university. We're ranked fourth in the UK for international outlook. It's not just our students, it's our staff as well. And it's also reflected in our curriculum. Over 15,000 students and almost 40% of those students are from outside the UK. So you will get to study, live and work with people from all over the world. And I think I've just got time to share my contact details. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, we have the University, University of Glasgow. Right, give me one second, everybody. Uh, share my screen here. Hopefully this works. If not, then oh well. <laughs> Bye everybody. My name is Jay Shalen. I am with the University of Glasgow. I'm one of our senior international officers. I'm based in Chicago, Illinois, so apologies for no Scottish accent. And I recruit students from the Northeast and Midwest parts of the United States that are interested in attending school for undergrad, postgrad, study abroad, you name it. So Without further ado, we are founded in 1451. We are an ancient Scottish university, and we are the fourth oldest English-speaking university in the entire world behind Oxford, Cambridge, and St. Andrews. Um, we have about 30,000 students total from over 140 different countries. Uh, I would say it means we're about half Scottish students and half international students, uh, which only means 
uh, you know, we're only 2% U.S. So of that 30,000 students, a less than about 1,000 students are coming from North America. So I always ask students when looking to go abroad, first question, how international do you really want to feel? So we're the 29th most international university in the whole world, 14th in the U.K., 67th in the U.S. world rankings. But again, I can go on and on and as I continue to go on and on, Scotland was voted the most beautiful country in the entire world in 2019. And that's what I love about Scotland. Pictured behind us is going to be Loch Lomond, which is, one of the, which is a lake. Loch means lake. And um, this is about 35 minutes out, outside of campus. So it's great because many people, many people think of Scotland as, you know, lush rolling hills, picturesque views, which is very true, but we are located in Glasgow, Scotland. Glasgow is the largest city in Scotland at about a million people. Many people, many people think Edinburgh is. Edinburgh is only 650,000. We are the largest at about just under a million. And Scotland as a country is only 5 million people. So you're in the largest city in the unit, and it is the second best for shopping, fourth largest in the UK. Um, so again, if you're looking for more of that metropolitan area feel, you're going to get that here. But we're actually located in the west end of this Glasgow. So uh, very similar to if you've ever been to Chicago, I would say it's like one from Wicker Park to the city, or if you're from New York, you go from Brooklyn to Manhattan. The distance of being about um, 15, 20 minutes from the city center. And my favorite part of being in the West End is actually the photo behind you called Ashton Lane. Ashton Lane is going to be about 200 feet right behind campus. And it's going to be a uh, pedestrian only street, as you can see here. And there's tons of restaurants, shops, and pubs. And this is just a great area to grab a pint with a mate after class and just kind of enjoy being uh, in Scotland and in Glasgow. So, again, tons to do in the city life. Now, speaking of the West End, here's a great photo aerial shot of the West End, and I'm sure the first building that pops up to you is going to be the main building, which is designed by Sir George in the 1800s. Fun fact, this is the clock tower used in the movie Harry Potter, and you can go up the clock tower when it's not windy. Problem is that it's pretty much always windy in Glasgow, so the five times I've been, I've not been to go up there. But in this building will be our Adam Smith School for Business. Adam Smith, the founder of economics, went to Glasgow. Um, as long as up with uh, some humanities courses, international relations, psychology, tons of lecture halls, professors' offices, coffee shops. You'll definitely end up having class in here or at least walking through this building. We have a library, 13 stories. It's a library. But on the 13th floor will be special collections where you want to be able to, to hold some rare pieces like Shakespeare manuscripts and other things that are loaned out to Glasgow. You can go up to the third floor or, or 13th floor there. But really, you'll be spending a lot of time in the Fraser Building. The Fraser Building is our student resource building. So this building is four floors. On the fourth floor will be one of our dining hall options. In the United Kingdom, dining is going to be known as self-catered, where it sounds just like it sounds. You're going to be catering for yourself. So there are dining options on campus. But the way that it works is that you'll be living more of a flat-style living, uh, where you'll have a common area kitchen where you make most of your meals and common area hangout room. And, and you'll have your own room where you can put your own little microwave and fridge as well, too. On um, the third floor will be our international student support office, anything with visas, paying for school, study abroad, that's going to be on that floor. And then on the second floor is going to be, which is the ground floor, is going to be uh, the doctor's office and the bookstore. So realistically, if you're a student, you have any questions, I always say the Fraser Building will probably be your first stop. At Glasgow, we have over 500 different program combinations. Another fun fact is in the United Kingdom, typically all of the majors and double majors are already preset. So, if, for example, if you want to go into business at University of Glasgow and you think you want to double major in business, I can tell you that we offer 34 different combinations with business. So, again, it's going to be one of those things. The only thing that we do not offer at Glasgow would be performing arts. If you want to go into performing arts, you'll go into the Glasgow School of Art, which is about a 10-minute walk from campus. Now, in the United Kingdom, you've probably heard of England, Wales, and Northern Ireland being three years. In Scotland, we're going to be a four-year institution. And another fun fact, the United States loosely based our education system off of Scotland. So Harvard, Yale, all those big schools have Scotland to thank. You'll see here what's nice about the United Kingdom is that you are taking more of the classes that you are desired to take. There is no first two years of coming in undecided and, and doing your gen eds here. As you can see, this is a physics major. And then during the first year, they took chemistry and astronomy as their secondary areas. And then in their second year, they brought down chemistry. And then their third year, they only brought down physics. But if they wanted to switch to chemistry, they could have because they took the prerequisites already. So again, you're taking more of the courses that you want to take throughout your uh, college experience in the UK as opposed to doing your gen eds for two years and still deciding what it is that you want to go into. Now, when it comes to entry requirements, we're looking for at least a 1280 SAT or 27 ACT, and then two AP exams of the four or above in relevant fields to your program of study. But for the next incoming class, we are going to be test optional, which we require at least 
a 3.5 minimum unweighted GPA, along with honors, AP, or dual, enroll dual enrollment coursework within the field of study that you're applying to. And then with our final slide here, we uh, tuition starts at about $25,000 and goes up uh, with, depending on the program you choose from. We do accept FAFSA, any federal student loans can come over, Pell Grant's not eligible, but subsidized and unsubsidized, and unsubsidized loans are. And then there are three US-based international officers here. We have myself, Jason in DC, and Ashley in Santana, California. For any questions that you do have, if I'm not there, they're able to help too. And here are my contact details, and that's about it. Thank you so much. With that said, that concludes the presentation portion of our session today. But I would love if all of our amazing presenters can come back. Uh, feel free to turn your camera back on and I will pose a question to each of you. Feel free to order, um, to, to respond in the order in which you present it. Um, the first question here, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Okay, we'll start off uh, again. I'm Todd from the University of Melbourne. Uh, so when I was a senior in high school, like 35 years ago, I was pretty overwhelmed with the choices. Uh, for those of you looking overseas, you now have resources like virtual campus tours or the ability to connect with our current students um, to really get their in perspective what it's like if you don't have the chance to, to visit. All right, so I usually recommend to students what I said in my presentation, which is to check out unofficial um, hashtags and what students are saying about the university, just so you get the full picture of everything. Um, my other thought is just, I mean, you're at an international session here, so you're probably thinking internationally if you're watching this, but at the same time, don't be scared to do something that your friends are not doing. A lot of students tend not to look internationally, so if, even if you're the only one from the school, don't be scared. I promise you, you will be okay <laughs> in the UK and everything will be just fine, or in Australia, or yeah. Um, similar, to Todd, similarly to what Todd has said about feeling overwhelmed, um, my advice would be to, to take time. And, and I mean that in a sense of take a year off, take two years off. If you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, there's a lot of information out there. There's, there's a lot to, to kind of uh, review and feel comfortable making a decision. And your education has been exhausting. There's brain fatigue. And that was the case for me. And I took two years out from my high school before I decided to go to university. And it was the best decision I made. It gave me that time to focus and re-energize and get some more life experience, which really helped me progressing from my uni through university and beyond. Yeah, that's great advice. Um, I'd also echo that. Um, the thing that we normally tell students who are considering um, a place to study is really have a think about um, what you would want from the experience. You can make a list of perhaps of what are essential things that you would need to help you be successful as a student and there can be other things that you would ideally want um, in an institution you're going to spend at least three years with us um, so it's absolutely uh, makes sense uh, for you to find the place that's right for you um, and once you've made that list yeah attend events like this um, ask us those questions um, check on our websites um, and, and just find the university that's going to give you what you need and what you want from the experience I think I'm up next. Um, just to echo, I think what Todd said, one of the pieces of advice I would give um, students is talk to current students. Um, lots of our universities will have uh, platforms where you can speak to current students that might be studying a subject that you're um, hoping to study. So do speak to um, current students about their experiences at universities that you might be interested in. And if I can just squeeze in one more piece of advice, it is to have fun. Um, obviously, one of the main reasons that you're going to be going to university is your education, first and foremost, but you want to have fun whilst you're at university. So um, once you're at university, join as many clubs and societies that you think you might be interested in. It's such a great way to meet people that hopefully will be lifelong friends. Um, so yeah, have fun. It's my second piece of advice. And you know what, they all said great things. So Jasmine, I'm all set. I'm going to agree with all of them. Nice. Um, with that said, that concludes our college fair for today. Um, but I do have a few closing announcements. 
The first, um, as you exit out of this Zoom session today, a survey will appear. It's approximately four questions. Please complete this survey. It's very useful for us as we aim to improve the offerings for our virtual college fairs. Also, I wanna remind you to sign up for additional sessions by visiting our registration site. And then finally, the recording will be available within about a week or so. So feel free to visit our website, strivescan.com slash Ohio. With that said, I wanna thank you for joining us again. Thank you to our amazing presenters as well as all of our attendees. I hope everyone has a great day. Bye.